It's the kind of sight you will never see today. But if you had been in Lewisburg, in the Tower of the King's Bastion, in August of 1744, this is almost exactly what you would have seen. The teeming life of Lewisburg Harbor, when this town was the chief French settlement on Canada's Atlantic coast. Lewis Parker was just completing this and another painting when our heritage crew turned up in Lewisburg. It seemed an ideal opportunity to study the paintings and ask Lou about the work and research that went into them. While this painting shows the harbor from the town, the second painting shows the town from the harbor, nearly perfectly complementary views of the same subject, taken on different days to demonstrate Lewisburg's changeable weather. And Lewis Parker was delighted to talk to us. He didn't even put down his brush. Lou, we've just lurched back in time, the best part of 250 years, I guess, from the present day back to, what is it, August of 1744, when the waterfront at Louisburg, or Lewisburg as we call it today, was a scene of a lot of activity, and the town beyond it as well. This is the second of the two paintings that you have now finished to to show what life was like in Lewisburg in those days. Let's talk about the beginnings of this because I have a, a very rough sketch here which would seem to indicate one of the first attempts to visualize what is now in color behind it. That's right. Uh, this goes back quite a, quite a ways. I was already working on the, uh, the other one uh, the view from the King's Barracks Tower. Well, would you explain what the view is here? Where are, where are we now? Well, we're on a spire at, near the top of uh, the sister ship to Lardon. It was called uh, Le, Le Brillant, and it sat just uh, uh, to the east. I forgot my directions right. Just this side of the, uh, of the ship anyway. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of the sketches later on, I've got a spire jutting out here to suggest that that's the end of the spire you're standing on, but then it seemed redundant and it seemed to clutter this whole area. Mm. So we left the ship out. But you can see the Le Brelon from the other, uh, in the other mural. So we're in the crow's nest then of one of the main spires in the Brion. That's right. Looking at the activity in the harbor and the town beyond. Right. And All right. that was the, the idea was to the extent here was to go from the Pièce de la Grave uh, at this side and to be able to show, well, hopefully, we, we should have been able to catch the uh, Dauphin demi-bastion as we did in mural one, but it was just too much distortion to keep this mural the same size as the other, so we uh, decided not to go much beyond the uh, Frederick Gate, which is a highlight of the, uh, the key side anyway. Well, Lou, in spite of the fact that this is a very early sketch, some of the things that are in the finished painting are showing up even now, like Frederick Gate is still there, and Lardon is still more or less in the same place. Some of these things have moved around a bit. But let's get on and see well, some, of, some of the later things. There is a sketch which is a bit later, a bit more detailed than the one we just saw, right. but even here there are, there are changes in this area. Yeah, this is still before the decision to use the uh, pile driver scene. Uh, we had started to uh, put some activity on the key side. Oh, and incidentally, by this time uh, we had had the uh, helicopter flying over and taking uh, various aspects of the uh, town. And this is one of the views from the helicopter at least uh, it's adapted quite liberally from the helicopter view. So you actually had a helicopter go out and take pictures from roughly where that crow's nest would have been. Right. Uh, unfortunately, I'm too chicken to go up on a helicopter myself. <laughs> to, and so other people did it for me, and I was appreciative of, of that. Uh, the, uh, I was still thinking... My knowledge of ships at this time uh, I thought was fairly good, but I was just still thinking of, of a ship of perhaps the 17th century with a rather sweeping uh, deck and uh, a raised... And a much uh, higher poop. And a much higher poop deck. Right. And, and uh, of course, if, if I'd realized that right from the start that I couldn't have that swinging angle down, it would have been a lot easier. 
I eventually had to straighten this whole thing across and then use other devices to lead the eye around. Uh, you were using that curve to lead people's eyes into the activities in the painting. That's right, yeah. I see. Well, couldn't get away with that. <laughs> However, you've learned a lot about ships in the Indeed past year and a half or so. And we have an example of, uh, this is an early one too. Very early, and I feel rather embarrassed about this. It was before I had any idea of how the, uh, the stern was uh, constructed. And uh, it was it's just a lot of guesswork. And until What did you have to work from? Uh, at this point, I had the material coming in that Alex Storm was uh, collecting. Uh, but we had to establish a ship that would have existed in 1744 as a, uh, as a uh, 64 gun ship. And uh, we didn't have any specific reference for that. The uh, main reference came from a ship that was built about a half a century later uh, and uh, done up in detail in book form by a man named Boudreau in France. And they were a tremendous amount of help even though and with Alex Storm's help, Alex Storm has done an awful lot of work on, on the ships with me. And with his help, we were able to adapt the later ship to uh, evidence we had of earlier ships. Well, there wouldn't have been that much change even in 50 years in ship design, I wouldn't think, at that time. Well, it just so happened that in the 80s, in the 1780s, uh, great changes were made compared to the previous 200 years. And uh, I had no concept of what they were. And as I say, with Alex's help, uh, we determined exactly what they were. It strikes me that you must have had a run into a great many problems because Lardon is so large and so very much in the foreground that the details really have to be absolutely accurate. Right. You but mentioned the difficulty with the, the stern gallery and stern quarter castles or whatever it is they're called. Yeah. And uh, I guess we have a, an example or two of the various stages that we w you went through. Oh boy, that looks, <laughs> that looks so ridiculous now. Uh, I was trying to conceive of, uh, of, of the back. See, the only reason this exists is that we could have our little group of, uh, of uh, naval people uh, with the visiting uh, potentates from the town on the back, and that would be sort of a focal point for the whole mural. So to get that stage properly, I had to uh, find out exactly what, what the construction of this was. And this is very early. This, this is uh, before I tried for the double curve. That is, the angle that we're taking, the ship goes this way, and yet it, come, it bellows out this way. And we're looking, and those two uh, lines meet and make a straight line, at which, which is very confusing in perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, that was an early stage of the quarter castle. And thank goodness uh, Alex was so adamant about getting the, uh, the proportions correct on this. I must have drawn this thing about, with his help, and he drew it a few times, about a dozen times, <laughs> and finally got to understand uh, what it was all about. Well, what, what really are the differences between this and the way it should have been? Uh, well, uh, for one thing, at that period, I, I've jutted the railing in here, because uh, I don't know why I, I, I did that. I just wanted to break up the back a bit. Well, that happened, I think, on some British ships. It might have happened on the uh, HMS uh, um, Nelson ship. Uh, the, the Victory? The Vic Victory. It might have happened on that. But I'm not quite sure. But it certainly didn't happen in the French ships. Well, by this time, with Alex's help, I was beginning to understand the difference of, between a Dutch ship, a French ship, uh, and a British ship. And, uh, and as soon as I understood that, then the uh, quarter castle itself started to make some sense. How long did it take you to complete the basic work on Lardon? On Lardon itself, that must have gone on for at least three months. And uh, uh, that was from the original uh, scribbles until the final assistance from uh, Niels Janisch, who came up from Halifax, uh, to, to verify exactly where the, uh, how much the, the rigging, how much of the rigging went down into the wheelhouse and where they were connected. Uh, and between Niels and Alex, uh, we finally determined where all, these, all this rigging goes. So up until that stage, I guess three months total on just the ship. And in the meantime, trying to uh, establish, of course, the action for 
for the key side, the angles for the other ships, which are based on uh, examples that Alex gave me. These, uh, the, the, the San Joseph and the San Malo, uh, I think were actually in the harbor. There were ships that were in the harbor, and I don't know if there were specific descriptions, but by where they, what they carried and where they were anchored, uh, Alex could come up with the uh, knowledge of what kind of ships they should be. The San Josef and San Malo, are, they were fishing vessels? Uh, now you've got me on that one. I, I, I can't quite uh, recall. I only ask because of this activity here where they're oh, trying yeah. to disentangle the shark, is it, from the net? Right. Well, this, this was a happy, a happy coincidence. Someone happened to mention, I wanted to get some action between this ship and this ship. And someone happened to mention that the uh, basking shark was often caught in the nets of the fishermen and that the ships that were in port would help the, uh, the, the owners of the small chaloops save their nets by lifting the shark out of the water by the tackle and uh, uh, very carefully because it was very expensive uh, material, uh, the, the netting for, for a fisherman. Mm. Very carefully they would work the netting off instead of having to cut it off uh, if they couldn't uh, put it up in that position. So that gave me, see the, the angle here and this angle that leads into the flat uh, into the flagpole, which I could break with the landing uh, gull here, just worked out perfectly. I was so pleased with that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the San Josef is a fishing vessel simply because the net is there. That's right. It, I it's think assistance it being offered right. to a fisherman. I think it was a trader. I'm not sure though. The other uh, uh, the schooner here, uh, Gain Saint Charles, it was in the harbor at that time, and. Uh, I had to have Alex determine the depth of uh, certain parts of the uh, of the harbor, exactly where to put the ships, and we figured that this ship could be in this close to the uh, to the long wharf. And it, uh, then again, it gave me a nice step back from the uh, large ship to the quayside. The barge here is that loading cargo of some kind. Uh, it's waiting to unload cargo, and the, the master of the, of the barge is here gesturing for these people to uh, finish their work uh, so that he can come in and get rid of his barrels. But they aren't particularly paying much attention to them. Uh, they're just uh, taking their time and un unloading their own uh, craft, which is bringing wood from one of the larger ships that, is, that are out in the harbor, which are shown in the uh, in the uh, first mural. As a matter of fact, this barge itself is shown in the first mural, coming in from one of the larger ships. But this is a different day because the weather is quite different, isn't it, from the first one? This weather is a little more typical of Lewisburg to have uh, the, the density of the humid air, the fog in the background. The way the painting started was much foggier, but we determined that because we wanted to use the painting to show little details of activity, that I couldn't fog it up too much or we just couldn't see the activities. And it's important that we see the activities right. because that's the whole point of the exercise. Indeed. In fact, the real focus of the picture is on Lardon. Not even all of that, but basically on this stern section where you have all the gold and right. uh, it really draws the eye. It makes a nice centerpiece. You mentioned rigging a while ago and the fact that you'd done a fair amount of research with Niels and Alex into how that rigging worked. From that I assume that all of these bits of rigging that we see would actually have been on the vessel. You haven't faked any of it. None of it. Oh, no, that was, I was very uh, serious about doing that. It, the idea of faking anything that su supposedly is uh, realistic or representational and photographic as this, you, it would, the, a person who knew the ship would come in and he would reject the whole painting because of the flaws in, in one little area. Mm. And so and this is... There's one. bound to be an expert. Indeed, there, there, I, hope, I hope there are, and I hope that they uh, recognize all the details that have gone into it. Lou, I have an example here of the kind of detail that you went into, detailed research on the rigging, which you mentioned, because we have it here with a good many of the bits of rigging identified, the mizzen spar brace, for example, and the main course tack, and 
various other examples. This was all done through help with Niels Janisch and, and Alex Storm, was it? That's right, yes. And uh, actually, I had to name the, these things because when I started translating them to the, uh, to the canvas, and uh, Art Fennell started projecting it up onto the canvas with the projector. See, what happened was that we had to take slides of these things, project them up onto the panel, make the drawing onto the panel instead of using the old grid system, mm -hmm. and uh, then start painting around them. Well, these are named simply so that I could, or myself or Art, could complete one of the lines and know that where it started and where it ended was right and, and uh, didn't get confused with another line. And this also seems to be a fairly late model of the Stern Gallery. That's right. It's it's just about there. I think there were a couple of uh, couple of changes in the in the structure here, and the way it went back into the ship. But but otherwise, it's fairly fairly close to the uh, final one. Yes. Well, I want to talk about some of the activities that are going on in the painting. You've mentioned one or two of them already, but there are others that I'd like to concentrate on. But before we get into that. I think we should stop for a couple of messages. Lou Parker talked about the details and the careful research that went into the rigging of Lardon, the vessel in his painting's foreground. But the same can be said of any of the multifarious activities that take place on the canvas. To give just one example, there are something like 200 different figures in this painting. Each one is dressed correctly, down to the tiniest detail for the period. For all of these things, Parker was able to call upon the research skills and records of a dozen or more Lewisburg historians, members of the Parks Canada staff. Let's take a few moments to look at some of these details. You mentioned activities. Well, there are activities all over the place, on the quayside, through the town. But let's begin with a couple of the activities that you have put in on the ship. Here's one of your rough sketches. What was that one? This had to do with the, uh, with the men who were working on the ship itself, the seamen, who were in the process of tarring the rigging, uh, which had to be done pretty well every time a ship came into port. And uh, we had to make decisions as to whether the tar would be mixed on the deck, on the open deck. We figured yes. Which uh, kind of bellows would be used. We had examples in Diderot for that. Uh, we had to do there's some guesswork. Uh, for instance, the tripod that's holding the, the cauldron in, in which the pitch is being heated. Uh, we didn't have specific reference on that. And yet it's logical to assume that there would be a tripod. Yes, because of the way uh, we have seen them do other activities uh, in the 18th century similar to that. And you mentioned, I think, oh, quite some time ago, the fact that, that this group here is a focal point for the 
the whole painting. And we have, I guess, one of your <laughs> preliminaries for that. Very early sketches, yeah, I think. Yeah, we, we had established the four men and, and the two women. Uh, the two what women is happening? Uh, let's see, I, I uh, think the, the, the captain of the ship uh, is indicating the work being done on the quayside to uh, one of the ladies from town. Uh, this, I think, is the governor. Because, uh, oh, some of the characters changed their, uh, changed their roles. <laughs> I think at one time that was going to be Bigo. But I think that's the, the governor and his lady, and there was an ensign there standing protectively uh, on the bridge with them. And this is just a figure, it could be anyone, uh, one of the naval figures leading, looking into the door, just to sort of take some of the action away from the uh, hand that's pointing this way. But essentially it's a few visitors from the town taking right. a look over this huge French warship. That's it, yes. All right, we've mentioned activities on the quayside, and there's a, a very good one here. You, you talked about the pile driver, and that is not what we have, is it? <laughs> no, that was a, a, a very early sketch uh, in this series. I, I noticed it's uh, sketch number 72, but uh, that came after the first uh, 60, which had to do with the uh, Lardant. Uh, at first, we thought that the uh, pile driver might have been constructed on a barge off the, uh, off the key itself, and uh, that they would work out from the key. But then, in, in the, it just was common sense to assume that once they got that boulder, which weighed a number of tons, lifted up, that the whole barge would have fallen over and <laughs> gone into the, uh, into the harbor. So you had to put it on the land itself. So we put it on the wharf and, uh, and assumed from evidence, again in Diderot and other sources, that they would have worked from the key out into the harbor. It's a very interesting activity, and one, obviously, that goes on around a harbor like this, and I guess at that time, driving piles to extend a wharf. What are some of the other activities that you're particularly interested in, in the painting? Well, there's the, uh, we can't quite see it from here, there's the auction at the uh, other end of the, of the painting. These, uh, are uh, people who are just coming off the ships, having arrived at uh, one of the wars. And uh, another interesting activity was, again, at that end of the mural, up near the King's Barracks, where there's a whole platoon of, uh, of soldiers going to march down to the Frederick Gate Wharf. And I forget what the, uh, forget what the incident was. Trying to, I should have a little index as to all the activities that are going on. Well, um, there's so much going on. And these, when you look at them, you realize that they were perfectly natural things to be happening in Lewisburg in August of 1744. Mm -hmm. I think you've done a marvelous job on this. Oh, and I, I, I'm just waiting now to see it in its finished location. Lou Parker, thanks very much. Thank you.